hello guys and uh, good morning and welcome to my channel so in this video we are going to talk about how you can process the the response data that you get from um mpesa so many people have been asking uh, like when you get the like the all the tutorials that i've done um, i did them up to the level where you get the response okay so many people they have a problem so uh, getting or extracting the data from the response because the response looks uh, something like this okay so let me show you this is the response that you're get, going to get from the uh, from the callback or uh, response data so the response data looks like this okay so you can see like it is a uh, the json structure data so you have to know how to process it in go in order to get to the amount to get to the uh, the receipt number and then transaction date and you also have the uh, phone number okay so this response i just got it from i don't know if the the response you get is exactly like this but i I'm thinking that there's something that is missing. There's a parameter that is we are, we are missing here that you get a response, live response. But then uh, let's just look at how you can process this data so that you can you can get the the amount, the Mpesa receipt number, and transaction date, and the the number, yeah, the phone number there. So this is what you get. So when we are getting the response. First, let me explain that um, I have this function that I'm calling the rest data, or you can call it response data, or whatever you want. Mm, and this is the method that receives the response from the uh, from the from Safaricom uh, from Mpesa. So when this response comes, the first thing you are doing here, we are decoding here so that you can get um, the the data in JSON format. Uh, because you don't know how the data is going to be sent and then this is just my own um, uh, code that I've just written this and this basically logs the response uh, it basically logs the response to my to, to laravel.log so if i just uh, maybe just delete that and save it and i go back here and i send uh, i send it and you can see I get uh, 200, okay. And then if I open that file, you can see that the response data has been logged to this file. That is the laravel.log. So basically, uh, that does not apply to this. I just I wanted to log that response to be sure that it's coming. Um, but then the rest data, you can see, uh, if we send back, you can see the structure. It's just basically the same structure that you see sending. we sent from the postman here the, basically this structure but what do we need now this is the json response and you want to to go it is a nested you see it is nested and you have to come go deep into this uh item here okay because that's the data structure that mpesa um, sends to us um so the first thing is to get to how do we get this is object i mean uh, this is object um, and we are able to get to this SDK, uh, SDK callback here. And then we, when you get to this, we are able to get to these others here. So you can get the response code. All these are important. For example, you can check if the response code is zero, you know that it was successful. Okay. So you can also use this important. Also, you can use the res result description. And uh, if it is this, you know that the and it went through successfully so meaning that the uh it is successful so for us to get the data what we are targeting is this callback uh metadata here and this is what we are targeting and how do you get there so since this json object uh, with an object so in in php we just get uh, we have the response we go to the body and then from the body you get to sdk callback and then get the callback metadata and you'll have arrived to this so if we uh, if we send back the callback metadata what is going to send is just going to send this so let's try so at this point here 
we just want to send back the rest data so that you can see all the data that is sent up to that point okay let's just copy this and come here and paste and we just want to send back the 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 rest data here which is the callback metadata so we just want to to remove that and save and now let me just i can disable the login but let's let just be there so let me try to send again and now let's look at the response now you can see it returns what does it return it returns this callback metadata you can see now you have those items okay now that you have gotten those items uh, the, the remaining problem is you can see it is an array of objects so the remaining problem is how to get this so you can see you have the name and then you have the value there so up to here uh, you can see this one will basically return the data array of the items that we need but then we need to dig into the we want to get the you can get the response code if you want it is here but what we are interested in as at now is to get the amount the transaction id and the phone number okay those are the, the three uh, that are very important that you need to extract from this rest data that i've just shown you here this is the rest data now but from here now we want the amount the user paid the transaction id and then the date if you want you can also get the the phone number so and you know that array index starts from zero meaning that this is item zero here index zero so how do we get the amount so for the amount here amount paid you just use the rest data and that one that i've just shown you uh, get the rest data here and they go to item and then zero so it, let me show you if we go to postman you can see that you have the item so you are targeting this item and you are targeting the first index which is zero here the item in the first index here which is zero and uh, and you can see when it is zero we have let me show you so item zero and it has two things there it has two items it has the amount and it has the the value so we know that we are targeting the amount and the first one is amount so basically what you want it is an object uh, we can it is like a, an object here so you can just access directly the the value there and we know that that is the amount so that's why you can just say we, we get the, the first item and then the the value which is going to be the the value of the amount which is one so if we copy this um, and just comment this out and we come back here and paste that but instead of returning the dress data you just want to return the amount you can see that it's going to pick that specific item uh, which is uh, the value of the first index of that rest data which is the amount so let's just try that so it's going to return one okay so let's just try looks like there's a problem and it is not normal for it to take that long it means that there is an issue um, so let's look at our error log file and no there is no issue up there did you return it okay let's try a return response json amount paid okay it should work then why it is taking long yeah and you can see it returned one okay it returned one so and then let's just uh comment this out so that you can again look at that so comment that let's all comment this out so save that and then we just want to get a, again the callback metadata there so we can again send it and you can see this is the callback meta, met, metadata i was explaining so you can see we get a uh, amount or the value one that is if we need to get amount 
and now this is going to be the index one okay the index one this one is going to be index two and this one is going to be index three so just use the same criteria to get all those items so for example the the transaction id is going to be the index one inside that item array and then you get the value uh, the value is going to be uh, this one and then if you wanted to get the transaction date you can use the same this one is going to be index two okay this is going to be index two mm. so to you will get the value it's going to be this and we are targeting the phone so the phone is going to be index three that is why you can see here item then index three and then i get the value it is going to get the value of the phone so if i comment this out and just comment this so let me save that so this should return the phone number so let's just copy this because it is index um let's just remove this and paste and save it so if we try again you can see we get the phone number so basically that is how you process the response data i know many people have been asking how do you process the now the response data that you get from uh, from mpesa so basically you have to dig uh, uh, through uh, in, into the uh, the the objects and get to the array and then you can now extract those items this way and then so after getting this that is when you can now do the other logics the other logic maybe for now saving to the database you can do some manipulations and then doing the payment so you can see that after extracting those now we have the response code you have the the response message you have the amount paid and then you have the uh, the employer transaction id and then you have the phone number so if since you have this now we can just proceed and we can now use those details we can save them to the database so what i'm doing here i'm just uh, manipulating that phone number to change it back to 07 so you know that if we look at the structure of how that phone number is sent, it is 254 7 and let's say that this is the format yet somebody registered as, as 07 so basically what i'm doing here i'm reformatting that number back to 07 you can see here back to now 07 and then as those are the uh, string of numbers uh, those are the numbers i mean and then so here i'm doing i'm now uh, registering that payment using that the amount that I got, I got from the callback uh, the transaction id and then the formatted uh, form okay another thing that uh, people were asking or been asking is so how do you identify the the specific user that that transaction is linked to now in laravel or in any other framework you're using maybe i can just explain the logic for example you can make a, a field that is phone because you are sure that you're going to get back the phone so you can just make on that specific user you can make the field phone and that field should be nullable so meaning that it should not be required and when somebody uh, is making payment you can populate that specific user's phone with that phone that the user used to pay with okay so this is what i mean uh, this is the phone uh, like if you i look at uh, i'm sorry for those who don't understand laravel i'm using laravel for demonstration but if we go to the users uh, migration you can see i have this field phone and that field i've set it to nullable meaning that it can receive null values so when somebody pays um, when somebody pays uh, let's go back to payment so let somebody pays here they are required to enter the phone and then the amount so let's say somebody enters the phone this phone here and then the amount they want to pay maybe one shilling so when i click the pay button 
you see this is the logged in user so at this point i am able to get that user's information i'm i am I'm, i am able to access the user's session something that the callback when the callback comes will not be able to access the user the specific user session okay so at this time that i'm able to access the session i know that the phone number that is going to be sent back it is going to be the same phone number that the user used to pay that specific user was logged in at that specific time so what i do in this case is to get this phone number and when the, he's making the payment remember i have the the phone the phone field here so when the user is paying the is making the payment i get that phone number before i uh, before uh, initializing SDK push, I get that phone number and I save to that user's uh, to that user's phone number field. So I will edit the user's phone number field and change it to the phone number that the user used to pay. And in the back of my mind, I know that that specific phone number is the one that will come back, and I can use I can use the transaction that phone number to trace the user who did that payment. So, for example, after since I'm paying with that specific phone, like you can see, I'm using uh, the call this data here. I'm using that specific phone. Mm, if I pay, the transaction is going to the, the call. The transaction is going to come to the the callback data is going to come to the URL that I set as the, as the callback URL. And that data, uh, that callback is going to be handled by this method that I've just shown you here. And this method, it goes and saves to the payments table. And you can see that I reformat the phone back to the state it was when the user was paying. And then after that, uh, how I am, I'll be, it, it is very simple for me to get the, 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 the user who made that specific payment or the payment that belonged to specific user because I saved uh, that phone uh, to that specific user's uh, phone field. But then the problem will be when this user is trying to make another payment but with a different number. So I think you need to cache those specific uh, details so that you can trace the user's payment history so that you know that at this time the user paid using this phone number, at this time the user paid using this phone number, and this time the user uh, paid using this phone number. Or alternatively, um, you can get the call back uh, before it is the payment is saved here, and you can you can have the user ID in the payment table and you make it nullable, so that uh, when the call back comes, you get you get the uh, you get the the user with that specific phone number here. So you can do, for example, user is equals to uh, auth. Okay, we can just get from the user table. So you can just user where um, phone, so that you can intercept it. Before me, you know the user, the name, the user will, will, the user can make many payments. So where the phone is equals to this uh, formatted phone number. Okay. You are able to get that user that way okay and then you just want to get the first and what you want to do you just extra extract there the user id because you know that that user's id is not going to change and then in the payments here you can add another field that is called user id and then you'll save that specific user id inside this user id field so with the user id you are able to identify that specific user who made whether they use different numbers it doesn't matter you're able to know the the transaction that belong to a specific user so there are many logics that you can use but uh, it's, up, it's upon you to figure out okay so i think that is it on this for those who've been asking uh, how to prove the callback data and in case you have any question you can just post in the comments uh, sec comments section thank you so much